Hey hey heretics, Fish here. Today we will cover a very interesting game that goes by the name of Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, a game playing which can be compared to watching those motivational TikTok or YouTube shorts depending on the type of your mental illness. Because every time I see them, I want to kill myself even harder. Welcome to 40k Dark Tide. A game of some virtues and many, many flaws. A game that is not your typical poker player because it is very upfront about what type of game it is, or rather what its developers think of you, the player, consuming their product. The game which flaws are so well hidden, you have to possess a ton of degrees in video game studies to cover them, just if you are applying to become a video game YouTuber. And it's true, it's a fact. Look at me defending my doctorate, which scientifically proves that DMC Reboot is a dog shit title, but I digress. Right now, I will prove everything I stated about the game by doing the unthinkable. Launching the game. First, we have a launcher. Pretty standard procedure. Although I did not see a prompt asking me to make a Fat Chuck account to play. Step up your game, Fat Chuck. You have to sell my data to China, don't you? Well, do your job, and I will do mine. Okay, okay, guys, settle down. Obviously, this was just a joke because making an account is a requirement. And what is that? That is the title screen, and I want you to take a good look at it, because you won't be doing much else for a while, as this game takes some time to load, and we in our community of uh, deeply intellectual people call this the first boss. A tough fight between you, those very guy funny moments on your phone, and this Afrocadian psyker staring right into your soul. Okay, now the game is loaded, and we have to actually select our character. Half of them did not even load, but I know what they look like, okay? I created them after all. So let's go with this guy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just now we have hit the second boss fight, and this is just. Whew, I mean, those seven guy clips are bursting through my screen right now, but don't worry. We have these funny quotes that, for all I know, were written by Dan Abnett, and he is in the game, by the way. Like, like this is not a joke. He was a big deal of the marketing campaign, after all. In fact, he's here right now in my studio. Uh, Mr. Abnett, can you please enlighten us with the lore of this land? Is it still loading? Uh, God fucking damn, I'm running a fortune humor here. Uh, the guys, do not click off because uh, you, you you can write funny comments that I have to buy an SSD and it works fine for you and you're having a blast. And don't forget to put that smiley face at the end, thus attempting sarcasm. Because, you know, here's the deal. Me and my friends play this game and we have this one guy whose PC is not very good. I mean, he can barely run these asset flip porn games that Steam keeps recommending me and he always loads in first in the missions on the morning star which is like 10 times smaller than the missions he always loads in last oh would you look at that it finally loaded of course i sped up the footage quite a bit in the editing but it is what it is now of course this is the new hub filled with amazing new characters like flying hands and heads and before you complain this is lore accurate, because as you can clearly see, 40k universe is very, very deep in the future, where they actually invented torso decapitation and limb levitation. Uh, they got done happen, guys. This is accurate, okay? Okay, now I have to select a mission here, and of course I cannot actually select the mission I want, so I have to hope that there is something interesting here, and there are vantage. Cool, I, I guess I'll have to take this one. Whew, let's go! Searching for strike team, baby! Although they might be busy, I've heard they're still exhausted from that unready button they added. Whew, let's go! Finally! Gonna play the game. Oh, that's a... That's a... Two psychers with smite on my team. Uh, okay, gotta disconnect from that one real quick. Here we go! Yeah! Finally! Oh, and the game launched in 20 FPS. Uh, gotta reboot the game. Um, um, this PC can run Cyberpunk on Ultra with no problem, by the way. Just saying. Okay, now we get to play. Okay, finally. I, I was getting a bit tired, honestly. And, uh, oh, uh, what, is, what is this now? Uh, I guess I will just re uh, Okay, I, I guess I will reboot the game again and pick, pick a different character. Wait, what? what? Why Why am I in the same mission? I, I'm, I'm a different guy now. I didn't even press reconnect, but okay, whatever. As long as I get to play. What the fuck? 
what, what, the, what the fuck? They, they put me back in just, just to remove me anyway? And, and you know what they call me? The penis man because I'm going back in there. <laughs> Let's go and it crashed. Thanks for watching guys, smash that like button. Okay, I know that skit went for a very long time, but I have to get really clear here. Darktide is a video game that is buried under an extraordinary pile of technical issues, delusional design choices and a clear lack of thought. If I were to describe this game with one and only one word, that word would be inconsistent. And inconsistency is not something you can just see. The majority of players who play video games only play them for about 10 hours and move on. That is exactly the reason why so many questionable games have positive reviews. The players don't put enough hours to see these things and I'm not asking them to do so, but as a person who is trying to review this game I kinda have to. Problem, I really don't want to, because this is no game mind you, it's a medieval torture device. So what should I do? And Trust me, I watched enough business-oriented tips and tricks to know that if you simply cannot do something, you have to find a guy vulnerable enough to be scammed. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, what I meant to say is you have to find friends to help you. And so since I'm not nearly experienced enough Yikes. in this game, I summoned these two ancient familiars to help me on my crusade. Here is Teleport. <laughs> So, uh, what degree of autism do you have to have in order to play this game for more than 2500 hours? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah. And this is Crab. I am uh, a Crab online and I have uh, been testing and contributing to Dogtide in various ways for a while. Uh, I like video games. You're selling yourself short, man. Crab is the guy who made the Devil Claw as good as it is. Um, he. The changes Crab did are fantastic. Like, did the stuff you've done, man. Mwah. We kiss. We kiss for sex with Crab. That said, let's get into this game because, trust me, there is a lot to unpack here, okay? I, I mean, we, we talked for almost three hours and I still feel like we covered something like a third of the game. A thing that you always have to consider when reviewing this game is that this is technically a sequel to Vermintide 2, a game that I covered in this uh, very short video. So, from my perspective, when making a sequel to a game like this, you have essentially a free cheat code. Mods. You can check out the mods that people did for the previous game, look at what is the most popular thing out there and just implement it in the next game, because according to your most loyal players, the most important thing there is in a video game like this, this is what your game is lacking. So, Fat Shark thought of this, I mean, they're not stupid, I think, and did exactly that by removing features that were already in Vermintide 2. Okay, at, at this point, I, I'm convinced that this game is an April Fool's joke, right? I mean, you could not look at Vermintide 2 and see that the most popular mod for this game is Numeric UI, and Numeric UI is the most popular mod for Darktide 2. Off to hang myself! If you're wondering just how stupid some of the changes are, you cannot say yes or no in this game without a fucking mod. They even botched the inspect animations on the weapon as your camera now gets locked. How, how did this even happen? And remember what I said 10 seconds ago? Uh, roll the Yakuza tier flashback. This is what your game is lacking. In Darktide, mods are not, you know, something that's lacking. It's something that makes the game actually play. Playable. Scoreboard, that was in Vermin Day 2, well, that's a mod, because it's toxic to see you perform better than everyone else, apparently. There's a ton of semi-automatic weapons in the game that are impossible to use unless you set them to full auto. Well, guess what? That's a mod too, and this is something I simply require you to use unless you want your finger to fall off 10 minutes into the mission. Seriously, what is this shit? You see, player, ammo that you collect, unlike Vermintide, only restores a tiny portion of your ammo. Uh, okay. What portion? Uh, I don't know. Figure it out yourself. Just don't forget to buy the toilet seat for Psyker as a helmet that is worth a monthly salary in your country. You have to download a mod that allows you to see how much ammo do you actually take from the pile. You you, you cannot make this shit up. Oh, and you, you think that's bad? Whew. You cannot see how much ammo your teammates have. You cannot see their loadout, their grenades, or hardcore drugs that they are packing. You cannot see the radius of a medkit this game has, nor how much charges the ammo crate has in it. You might say this game is a joke. I say this game is the circus, and you, my friend, are the clown. 
and the technical issues somehow overshine the design issues this game has, which is so bizarre, I just have to cover them. Let's start with the most obvious, optimization. And if you're surprised to hear that this game has problems with it, I suggest looking at your calendar and checking the year we're in. Optimization problems is as much of a trend as having a blast and saying that making video games is very hard, because back in the day it clearly was very easy. This game has some of the most bizarre optimization issues I have ever seen, because they're different for everyone. For example, Teleports said that since the last patch, the game is in the greatest state frame-wise for him. For me, I lost like half of my frames. The game was running on 180 to 200 for me with no problems. Now it's barely functioning on 80 to 120. So in terms of having a stable frame rate, you just entered a fucking lottery. The concept of which the game really likes. So maybe it's actually intended. Uh, must be those surprise mechanics I've been hearing so much about. Not to mention that sometimes the game launches in 20 FPS and your only option is to restart. As a frequent player of some impeccable, high quality competitive shooters, I know how important a good netcode is to a game like this. Although I've yet to see one. Starting from desyncing to getting stuck on nothing to getting a micro stun while sprinting to getting shot mid dodge by a sniper that spawned two miles away from you to getting ghost hits. Playing this game can offer some of the worst experiences ever. You think childbirth is bad? <laughs> Where do you get 100 to 0 by a random shooter that stunned you from a mile away? But he's not done yet, because, <laughs> because hold on, because you know all those stuns and you know those sprints that don't work? Guess what it interacts in a really horrible way with? That's right, the game's horrible netcode. And that means <laughs> that even if you somehow manage to toggle your sprint correctly and you just still get shot by that one cocksucker, your movement won't just get stopped, you'll, you'll have that disgusting micro rubber banding that happens. And it is genuinely one of the worst feelings I think I've ever had in a video game. 2,500 hours I have I have stood my ground that the single biggest threat in the game is the shooters, just because of the unpredictability of the 100 to 0 that can happen to you. Go to be fair, ghost hits are the most innocent offender here, but my god do they happen so often, it will make the calmest soul in the world mad. Especially when you are using a precision weapon. There are things that used to be broken with the game that people would not believe me if I told them. Like the, if you think the netcode is bad now, there was a period of time for Dark Tide that lasted until patch 13 where you could not dodge dogs. This isn't like a, like a, you know, you had to time it right or something. Like literally dogs got like some, some weird lag competition. They would just fucking get you through walls. It was horrible. The, the netcode was, was, was incredible disaster. Even when asking what is the worst aspect of this game, Crab said this. Any small interruption that breaks the state of your character, so tiny lumps on a wall that stop a dodge, tiny ledges on the floor that stop a dodge, an enemy that's fallen over in front of you that stops you from walking forwards and you can't see why, uh, tiny staggers that you didn't expect breaking a reload and you don't know where you were in the reload, a tiny knockback interrupting execution stuff. I just feel like... At a certain point, they just need to really say, we only interrupt what you're doing if we absolutely have to. And we just need to not ever, especially random and very small CC should never be applied to players. Because your brain can't predict when it's going to happen. You can't respond to it appropriately. You can't keep track of what your character's state is because it's an interruption that could have happened at any time. It's not long enough for you to meaningfully call for help or react to it in any other way. It's literally just like someone slapping you while you're trying to do yes, something else. Yes, yes. In my opinion, it is the lack of polish that really hurts this game the most. These micro moments is like there is a tiny goblin under your desk poking your nuts with a stick, which can be pleasurable at first depending on how many Sigma TikToks you watch a day, but after a while it will hurt so much you just kick the goblin in the face, or in some cases you just might commit hate crimes against the whole population of Sweden for coming up with this game. And there's a lot of other annoying small jank that just adds up to a lot of frustration, like your character randomly casting a levitation spell on himself when he touches stairs, random weapons cancelling the reload animation for no reason, some weapons having pullout animations that work only when you are in a pitch and never again, some melee weapons change their moveset when you switch to them, random ledges trap you because you think that you can make the jump, and of course, the reason I quit the game in the first place, the god 
awful sound this game has. Which, by the way, has been fixed. Oh, I'm sorry, it was not actually fixed because it was never broken in the first place. We just thought it was broken. Uh, my bad, guys. I guess the player base is just deaf, which may be an aftermath of playing one game as a KDM veteran. As you can clearly see, the sound has been completely and undoubtedly fixed. And there's no problem with it whatsoever. Here's a fine example of that, I hear a chopper here, I see him, so I think that I'm safe, but I am not, because there were two trappers here, and I had no clue that the last one was patiently waiting for me to get here. Of course, the worst criminals of wearing slippers and having kinky balls of rubber in their mouths are the trapper and the poxburster, better known to the common public as uninstall button and boomer, respectfully. These two are the most dangerous enemies in the game, which is also the reason you can never see them coming. The other Specials are guilty of similar things as well, I mean, all the specials can face through walls, that's normal for this game, but mutants, which are basically charges from Left 4 Dead, have this mechanic where if you're close to a wall, he's basically harmless, outside of confusing you with weird camera placements. The problem is, the definition of a wall is as obscure as the definition of an immersive sim. And of course there are dogs which are just got runners but that's funny. They can be even more stupid because their pounce is very random due to them just, um, you know, skipping the entire animation where they're indicating it. And many, many, many other things. Like um, your character completely disappearing with all of his gear that he spent hours grinding to which Fat Chuck will probably respond uh, rip, we can't do shit. So let's discuss design choices and we'll start with the enemies because I feel like it is the most important part. We already briefly discussed shooters and some specials, but trust me, there's, there's more. more. And since we already talked about the Pokes Bursters, let's start with them. <coughs> this enemy should either be removed completely or heavily reworked because it is not fun to deal with him whatsoever. The only way to deal with him is when he ignites, you have to push him and dodge backwards, because due to netcode, you can push the guy and he'll fly one centimeter away from you, sending you into space or into an army of crushers, bonus points if he did it while jumping away from you. But surprisingly, this is not the reason I want something to be done with him. It's this. When he spawns, he will stumble around slowly and you have to drop everything that you're doing and focus on him. You can shoot him, but a lot of times you cannot do so, because if you do, he explodes and your teammate will probably thank you by disconnecting if you do it in his close proximity. If he spawns in these spawn doors that I just love so much, you have to just stand and wait until he decides to engage with you, same if there is a ledge. But don't be afraid, my child. Until he ignites, he's essentially harmless. Until he decides to blow up for no reason anyway. Uh? Another enemy on the list of please remove is everyone's favorite, Bulwark. I'm fucking invincible! enemy of this marvelous design deserves an award of some sort. It's an enemy that does not only remove any interaction from you, but also obscures that little vision that you did have. As this game is a huge visual clusterfuck, and now it also includes certified big boy hater blockers. He can push you with no windup, which you cannot do anything against, which just further completes this mobile suit Gundam, thus creating a unit that simply cannot be interacted with melee-wise unless he decides to attack you first. And then he will still probably absorb a swing with uh, Shield's enormous hitbox, even though you're standing right behind him. Another enemy I truly despise are the flame enemies. On their own, they are completely fine, but sometimes they stack on top of each other, which is a fairly common occurrence, by the way. So this is what your average award game will look like. And most of the times you can literally do nothing about it, because flame goes through your toughness and, again, it kills your momentum, which in a game with sprinting, dodging, sliding is the absolute last thing you want to do. You might even see a pattern here. If you remember my DMC reboot video, I compared the game a lot to a traffic jam. Well, this is the same deal here. Hell yeah, boys, let's go! Oh, that's a 
Bulwarks. Shit, we, we literally cannot do anything without grenades. Okay, guys, good fight, but now we have to just stand here awkwardly and wait for the player to go out. And we'll do it twice, actually. Off to hang my Fire also has a cool feature of making sure that you literally cannot see anything. Why, why are flames killing me and also stopping me from seeing? It's like someone said moving. to a friend of mine, you're gay and British, honey, pick a struggle. <laughs> I mean, this game was released in 2022. If you want good visual design where enemies actually pop out of the environment, go play Fortnite. This is a serious game for serious manly men, a modern game trademark, if you will. We here, like completely black enemies in grim environments in front of a black wall, so you will not be able to see anything, kiddo. But what happens way more often is um, a, a combination of two issues. One is hyperdensity like enemies blobbing up like occupying the same slot and you have like this merged ball of i could literally go into the second game and like mix like to put five maulers uh the f three ragers and four bulwarks and like two crushers and you would be completely incapable of telling me how many enemies there are and what type of enemies are here and the other problem is just how monochrome a lot of the flak carapace units are um they blend together so well and they blend together in other stuff so well um and i think a solution is just to stop spawning like a situation where you have like five bulwarks at once should probably not exist for reasons other than visibility but they're such a huge problem when they start blobbing up and they stop functioning properly yeah no i think visibility is definitely um a, a, a problem uh, with the game and i don't even think i would mind if they added some kind of accessibility thing that would draw at least a very faint outline against like certain enemies uh, because i can't even imagine playing this game if you're like a boomer another enemy that is just stupid by design are the ragers which are the new berserkers unlike almost every other attack in the game rager attacks cannot be dodged when in a full combo can't be dodged at all your only option until you're far enough away you're not being hit is block You've played, you've played Vermintide. In Vermintide, you could dodge around the Berserkers yeah, to like yeah, hit yeah, them yeah. Uh, around the combos. The, the Rager of Darktide is, is horribly badly designed. You've made a melee enemy who's like the optimal way to dispatch them is to not engage in melee combat with them, which sounds like it's like, oh yeah, it's good, then we've made a melee threat. But no, actually, you've just taken away like potential melee gameplay because it's, it's either I shoot him down uh, or I have, I have a dedicated stop the Rager button. And <laughs> I don't think... Either of those are particularly engaging. I would love to just be able to time a dodge, like dodge the correct side, get behind him and, and, and hit him in the back of the head and interrupt the combo that way. Versus I will mash the parry button or I will mash the stagger the rager button. And bosses are not great. <laughs> But I think it is literally impossible to make a quality boss fight in this type of game, so I don't mind them too much. But the slug and the demon holes have to go, they serve no purpose, they're not even annoying, they're just unnecessary. Now that we know how enemies work, let's discuss the spawning of these enemies, or rather, the lack of it. As of me recording this video, the spawns have not been fixed. I mean, it says they fixed them in the patch notes, but this is a straight up lie. Certain events on Max spawn like three snipers and call it a day, and if you want a comparison, this is how it usually looks. But aside from ambient spawns, the way the enemies spawn in general is personally one of the most frustrating things out there. There's a definite, like there are a lot of doors that are in the wrong place. Um, and they're also like in general you don't really want to be fighting next to a door partly because yes. you say it's like weird and artificial but also just because it is like you you become far too aware of stuff like oh i can hear that a special has just spawned it's walked to the pre-door leaving position and it just stands there for five seconds you can yes. hear a mutant and you're like well i'm now stuck here for five seconds waiting for this idiot to come out and, and i think there's there's yeah there's lots of cases where spawn doors that are clearly in like they put it there because it was useful to have spawns come in that position well it's like if, if you could move it further back or i 100 agree um and and, and again it, it feels really weird and artificial when you're having to think like our enemy is going to teleport out of the magic <laughs> door behind me but even if you're an experienced player and know the doors like the back of your hand there is nothing stopping enemies from spawning in the door with no sound and doing either this or this. Also gunners and shooters on some maps really like to cluster together and form these shooting nests where they will just stand menacingly and gun you down in the streets like the degenerate that you are. 
This might also be the moment where you discover a new mechanic called suppression and realize that the uninstall button just became even more tempting than it already was when you saw the crafting. The way suppression works is that when you get shot at, you cannot shoot back. And it's garbage in both ways. When it works at you, it is incredibly annoying and stupid because the only way to deal with shooters is, ironically, to shoot them. And the chair on the cake is one bullet is enough for you to go into the suppression state. Now, let's flip it. When you suppress an enemy yourself, you are essentially hurting yourself because enemies immediately go into cover and you cannot kill them with most automatic weapons. And if you are an ogre, you literally trivialize the game by shooting once. It sucks, honestly. This mechanic serves no purpose and I hate it exactly like the coherency. When I transitioned from Vermintide to Darktide, I despised toughness, it seemed like painted to armor system from Wish, but upon playing the game more and thinking about it, I realized that toughness in itself is not a problem, it is a coherency, and some specific classes that is. Basically Fat Shark wanted people to play together, so as a way to force people into playing together, they introduced coherency, which means that pretty much all the buffs are based on this aura, that you can never see by the way, and on top of that, your toughness passively regens only in the set aura, which means you have to constantly hug your teammates to get your main source of survivability back. It's a system that literally doesn't matter. Um, so conceptually, it's a bad idea. You don't want like an, an artificial way to like force people to play according to what your very narrow idea of team play is. Coherency is inherently like degenerate. Uh, people shouldn't need like an like an extrinsic encouragement to stay together. You should just stick together because the game demands it or whatever. Coherency, toughness, regen might as well not exist. Uh, auras, I think, are not good. Uh, I don't like coherency. I don't like the idea of forcing people to stay together for any reason, whether that be getting toughness or getting a boost or whatever. Uh, it's lame. I think if the situation calls for players to split up, they should be able to split up and the game shouldn't quote unquote punish them for it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. And literally, absolutely no one who has a brain and plays this game will ever tell you, uh, please stay in coherency. Okay, I think that's enough talking about enemies and mechanics, so let's discuss classes. And we cannot discuss classes without mentioning the balancing. These things go hand in hand. And here is the issue. In my opinion, Duck that even on the highest difficulties possible is too easy. And the problem does not lie in enemies and spawns. I think they are fine when they work. The problem lies with classes. Each of the classes have some things that break the game, making it infinitely less challenging and thus less fun. And keep in mind this is not like strong points of the characters, it's stupid points of the characters. Let's start with Veteran because I think this is the closest thing to Vanilla Doctor that we have, where the degree of bullshitness does not excel that much. And that is the reason why playing veteran can be annoying. If you're not really a meta player and just want to experiment on your own, you have to rely on coherency to get your toughness back or you need to jump through stupid hoops while every other class gets toughness for free for basically doing nothing. And when discussing classes, we have to discuss keystones, ultimates and blitzes which are basically grenades. Starting with blitzes, you realistically only have one option. Crack grenade is supposed to kill carapace targets, but throwing it on crushers is a way since they die from one whole overhead anyway. The only real targets are boomerangs that you can easily just dispose of with the other grenade that has million more uses since it gives you rending, the stupid mechanic in the game that allows you to ignore certain amounts of armor, causes bleeding that goes through armor, giving you extra rending with each tick, has higher radius, and on top of that, comes in larger quantities. Oh, and um, there's also a smoke grenade. Uh, it doesn't do anything at all, but it's uh, kind of funny. To this day, I don't know who... Ultimates are also very weird. If you're stupid, you can take Executioner's Stance. It actually allows you to see enemies and you deal some extra damage or something. Anyway, the other two ultimates literally break the game. Your Kruber Shout gives you like three different damage buffs, replenishes toughness, pushes enemies away, and grants you golden toughness. What is that? It's a nah I'd win mechanic, making it so shooters just vanish from your screen and making crushers looking at you confused, thinking why did you not take a single point of damage after they smashed you in the ground like a Looney Tunes character. This mechanic is complete garbage and should be just removed from the game entirely as not only does it make you immune to anything outside of fire, 
although there was a time in Dark Tide history where it did that also, it gives you extra toughness that if you lose, you can just get back up, as long as the buff stays. And the last ult is the um, invisibility, aka the worst mechanic in tight games. I did not really talk about it in my Vermintide 2 video, so I'm doing it now. There should never be a button that you press and completely turn AI off. If you pop stealth, all enemies, if the game worked properly, literally cannot do anything to you, allowing you to do anything you want for free. Not only that, but by doing so, you fuck up your team, because any aggro that you had on you goes onto them instead. And on top of that, it completely trivializes any objectives this game has, by having one guy pop stuff and do them risk-free. And if you thought that was bad, you are in for a treat, because Fetchat also made sure to include cooldown reduction in this game, which means your cooldown gets 6 seconds shorter if you kill a special. If it doesn't seem that powerful, don't forget that this game's idea of difficulty looks something like this. On top of that, Veteran has one more mechanic in him. He literally breaks the bullet economy by just being present on the map, as you and your allies in coherency get 1% ammo back for each special and the lead that you kill. That does not sound like a lot, but keep in mind. So there will be a lot of instances where there is no need for ammo pickups at all. You get all your ammo back in an instant, especially if you are like me and prioritize melee over gun. Now when it comes to keystones, they are like a perk that is uh, very strong. And I honestly find the majority of them very lame. Um, on veteran you have weapon specialist that grants you everything that you want by not really doing anything special. Half of the time I forget about this perk existing because it always works and I don't have to do anything to support it gameplay wise. The other one is Witch Hunter Captain's passive trait from Vermintide 2. Again, very basic. But even then, it is done in a terrible way. How it works is you passively gain tokens and you spend them the second you mark something. The more tokens apply, the more damage will be dealt to the target. And this is something you do constantly, because reason one, this is a modern game. No one can actually see the specials in the first place. And reason two, the sound is barely functional, so you need to mark all enemies, so people are more aware of them. Problem, Box Burster runs at your teammate, you mark him to warn him about it. That's 8 tokens you wasted doing nothing, so what people might do instead is save these tokens and not mark anyone that they are not focusing to only use it on targets like a boss or a crusher. This is a dog shit game design as it forces and more so rewards people for playing selfishly. And the next perk is just peak modern game engineering, I'm not even gonna bother reading what it does, because it forces you to stand still Why are this in the game! This is so stupid, it can be the best perk in the game, it can suck my dick under the desk, I am not using a perk that forces me to stand still in a fast paced video game. And when it comes to gear, Veteran has arguably the most broken bullshit in the entire video game which makes me disconnect faster than a smite psyker ever could. You're, you're playing the game and then the plasma trail comes in and yes. it's like, it's such a sinking feeling, it's, Jesus Christ. Yeah. The plasma gun, that one-shots everything, no matter the circumstances. Carapace, dead. Boss, dead. A guy behind the wall, super dead. And the best thing is, according to Fat Shard, this is a crowd control weapon. If you think about it hard enough, this all makes sense now. Psyker is this game's Sienna, but on hard doses of heroin, since listening to them talk is a form of torture, rather than seeing this appear in your Chaos Waste Run. In my opinion, Psyker is very poorly designed, as he has a ton of mechanics that overlap with each other. One of such examples is Assail, one of the three blitzes of this character. The issue with it is that it does 
everything. You throw generic flying crystals from a sci-fi movie and they connect with enemies. They find targets themselves, you don't have to aim, you don't have to see the targets, you don't have to manage anything, you spam left click and you win. And now you have a problem that there is no reason to use any gun whatsoever as there is not much downtime in between the throws. The next blitz is Brain Burst, you hold left click, aim at the target, head go bye bye. Very strong, very simple, very satisfying. I like it. Problem, it is basically a revolver with infinite ammo and some wind up. And of course the smite, the worst thing in the entire game. <laughs> Unlimited power, am I right guys? Just like the Emperor from Star Wars, right fellas? Smite has this weird effect that if you use it, you feel like you're useful and supporting your team, when in reality all you do is just annoy them. <laughs> Smite shoots out purple lightning forward, stunning like up to 8 enemies in a chain manner. It also does some damage, but it is extremely negligible. You, you're not killing things with this, okay? It's not happening. And if you put aside some extremely niche situations, like a pack of ragers, when no one on your team has ammo and their ults are on cooldown and no one has any demon claws or range blitz attacks or chainsaws. Yeah, it can be useful. Outside of that, you're as valuable as a summer ant. More so, by doing this very funny Star Wars roleplay, you are not killing things, as you are standing still and stunning things instead. There is no point to this in this game. You see something, you kill it until it lays eggs. Done. Look at this, this is what I'm saying. Just fucking kill them. Why are you doing this? You have a sword, the best blitz in the game. Fucking use that. What is the purpose of this? Also, smart is just very annoying in general because it simply kills any engagement you have with the game. You don't have to dodge, you don't have to be quick on your feet, you are just a pit bow in a kindergarten, no challenge at all. Also, bonus points if your smite psyker has a wannabe anime character and a bubble shield on top. As for ultimate, Psyker has some decent ones. You have the Venting Shriek, that vents your overcharge, pushes people away and sets them on fire. Shooter is either a bubble or a wall or this disgusting this abomination. Fine. On paper, it's fine. But there is another skill that grants you immunity to ranged fire if you crit. Uh, did you spot the problem yet? Like, just letting completely go of the sprint key and just completely knowing that you're gonna be immortal, walking yes. up to the pack of the biggest guns you can find and just holding left click with the last pistol. It's, uh, the first time you do it, it's, it's definitely an experience. As for keystones, they're fine. They do their job and I had no problem with them, outside of, again, them being very branded and doing everything I want with no impact from me. Now, when it comes to gear, Psyker has access to staffs and outside of the search staff that is smite, but it actually does something, they are entirely busted and should be heavily nerfed, especially the king of staffs, Voice Strike, that just kills everything you pointed at with no cost or risk taken. If you use this shit, you probably, unironically, watch Family Guy funny moments. I'm sorry, but I don't write the rules. Next up is Ogrin, or as I like to call him, Certified Rided character, Big Chungus, if you will. Playing Ogren can be only compared to playing open world games, you know how it's gonna go, yet you try it, it is just what you expected, but still you can't really stop, you already started, might as well finish it, maybe it gets better later, and guess what, it never does. It will be the most boring thing you experience that day, sitting right next to Pyrocynical Slope videos. Hey guys, it's me! Every piece of gear, every skill is extremely one-dimensional. Like, Ogwin is is capable of absolutely disgusting, ridiculously stupid things, but he's just not fun to play. Yes. Like, there's no world where I'm like, cool, I love playing this class where I'm interacting with melee. It's like, like, you can look at this keystones and it tells you everything the class fucking does. Uh, he holds heavy, he tanks, or he shoots gun. And also, when he's not shooting the gun, he holds heavy because his weapons have nothing else. Augen Melee was designed for people with severe handicaps. They are just completely empty. Like, they are mechanically empty. They have no interesting movesets. They have nothing cool about them. You look at most of his weapons, it is just spamming, like, shovel. Uh, original shovel, uh, spam heavy. You look at the Shovel Mark V, it's spam heavy or fold and then heavy. I mean, there's another thing too, right? Which is that how do you build an Ogre Melee weapon? Can you build crit? No. Can you, uh, does it matter where you aim the weapon? Nah, none of them have any headshot multipliers. And in general, like this is true across the weapons. They don't have very much of a, of a damage increase um, for uh, hitting weak spots. The class is called Skullbreaker. Or not, well, it used to be called Skullbreaker. And uh, they apparently are the torso slammer because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Going from, so an ordinary chest shot 
with the Mark One Bully Club on Carapace is 390. A crit headshot is 460. Jeez. So doing a crit headshot with that weapon is an extra 60 damage. Wow. But it, oh it, used to, it used to be worse though because the weapons had um, a, a, pro, a system where they would have they would take torso hits over headshots. So not only did you get no reward for headshots, you had to do the most insane things in order to get a headshot with some of the weapons. Like I have some videos of what I have to do in order to get a headshot with the Mark II Club heavies. And like, you know, I'm looking at 45 degrees up and to the left, the enemy isn't on my screen. <laughs> and it's like, and originally- And you're getting no reward for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, I did all of this to get 5% damage, hell yeah. Your blitz that almost makes up for it, almost is a keyword here, really. The holy brick. At first, I thought it was a meme. When I played, I realized it's an obligation. Mario, look what I made! It's a stone, Luigi. You didn't make it. <laughs> Having a one-tap projectile that you create out of thin air, like a highly intellectual wizard that you are, is just a godsend, especially if you consider the funny potential. There is no reason to pick anything over this, and you'll soon see why. Box of Grenades looks really cool, similar to the Cluster 8 in DRG, but it kinda sucks, and here's why. The box itself has an impact, which means it sets people flying. Flying away from the explosion radius. And the explosion itself is not even that strong, and considering that the art of pulling nades out of your gentleman's pocket is only accessible to veteran and brick benders, ah! you have to rely on grenade pickups, which, if you're lucky, will be available once per mission, that is considering a veteran with smoke nades will not snatch them right in front of you. Your last option is the nuke grenade, and before you go with your funny war crime bits, it's also not good, because you can only carry one, and that one veteran is still on the prowl. <laughs> Your first ult is the battering ram from Vermintide 2, but 100 times more powerful because you deal approximately 3 billion damages to anyone on the map, and you also get toughness because what the hell not, right? It's not like you get toughness for free anyway, right? Second ult is the taunt, and it is god awful. There are some situations where you can, dare I say, protect the little ones, but 90% of the time it will be the guy with the shield taunting boxwalkers and putting down his shield saying, I am useful. But unbeknownst to him, his team is playing true trio right now and have no idea that someone in the lobby plays wholesome ogren that says sa a lot. Next ult is a shooty ult and it's really decent. I don't really use it much, it feels strong and you do just suppress the entire Chinese empire by shooting once, but in terms of how good or broken it is, you better ask someone else. And I'm not even gonna bother with keystones, honestly, the only one you will take is the heavy hitter, which as I said previously, removes the point of thinking when playing Ogren, which is just a finishing touch in creating the most boring and unfun character in the entire game. And when it comes to Zealot, it's just a turbo AIDS delivery service. Whee! Do you want extreme mobility? Yes sir. Do you want invisibility? Yes sir. Do you want free crits? Don't worry, you don't even have to do anything special for them. Just stand near your teammates when they kill things. Do you want to gain toughness somehow faster than Ogryn? Yes sir. S uh, still not enough? Uh, how about bleeds? Ogryn brick but better. Zealot passive from Vermintide and some of the best weapons on top. You got it, boss. I remember I was playing Zealot for the first time and I was like, wow, I'm so good at this game, I'm carrying this so hard, and then I switched to Veteran. The effort that you have to put in in order to play Zealot is like twice less of any other character, because like an average Californian kid born in a rich family, you get anything you want for free and you're still complaining. Your blitzes are a useless flash grenade that takes two years to explode, Holy Fire, which, if anything, is a dedicated panic button, and the knife, which is very satisfying to throw. Oh. Not only are the knives the best out of the three by far, as you basically never run out of them, they also come with best perks, so there is no real reason to pick anything over them. As for ultimates, you get Vermintide to Zawa Dash, but better, because it gives you a free crit, mobility, which in this game is very important, it gives you 50% of the toughness back, because I wouldn't it, and on top of that, it nerfs the armor of the guy you hit, meaning Carapace will turn into flak. But Bash, how do you know this? It doesn't say anywhere that it does that! Correct, because Fat Shark has created this torture program in order to try and train real-life psychers to step forward and explain how the fuck this game even functions. 
also the ult has two charges and basically no cooldown, just in case if you thought that playing Zealot requires any skill. The next ult is a Holy Relic, it stuns everyone around you and gives your team yellow toughness. Yellow toughness is OP, but to get it you have to be close to allies and spend time doing absolutely nothing, meaning it's garbage. There's no such thing as a support in this game, so any support skill is not good by definition. And of course, the invisibility again, because this game really needed that. As a Zealot, you not only get the best skill in the game by Red Beast Swift, you get insane cooldown reduction from crits, which you get for free from multiple sources. Yeah, very well designed, guys. Keystones are very funny. Here you have three crits for doing nothing. You have full maxing keystone, which is not good because you're sacrificing a lot of raw stats in order to get it, and the payoff is not that insane. And the movement speed feels nice, but as far as I know, crits are just better in every single way, as as a zealot, you are already very zoomy, you don't need even more move speed. But don't quote me on that, since I don't really use this keystone much. And yeah, that's it. Now I want to discuss the style of the game. The thing I really like about Vermintide 2 is its vibe. The characters, their banter, their bones, it's amazing, even though it can be very repetitive. Hogger's Bridge. By making you create a character, you sacrifice a lot, because now you don't have to make banter for 5 characters. You have to make banter for 21 characters, and it's very, very tough to do so for any studio, and this is Fat Chuck we're talking about here. The characters you create are just terrible in terms of voice acting and their lines. There are some rare gems, like the male loose cannon veteran and... Uh, uh, no, I think that's it, really. There are some really good voice actors, like Ogrins are all very talented, male Cajun veteran is fucking awesome, the guy voicing him really gives it his all, but the lines are just god awful and unbearable to listen to. Oh, and by the way, if you want to make a female character, every single female voice is like an advertisement for lobotomy. Also, if you are like me and somehow selected the absolute worst voice possible, you cannot change them at all. You can alter your appearance, but that is all, folks. Also, you select so much pieces of your backstory that you might actually think that it matters. It does not. Aside from one and only one instance, in order to play the Cadian guy, in case you forgot, it's this guy. You need to select Cadia as your planet of choice. I mention that because if I don't, people will throw human feces at me, just like what happened during the beam staff incident. And it does not stop with the created characters. The god awful hub world this game has that we'll touch in a minute is filled with characters that you hate with every inch of your being. Ahoy! I'm Commodore Hallowet, but you can call me my Lady Alice or Oh Perfect Mistress. Oh, and don't bother telling me your name, my darling. Your sort don't last long, so I won't remember it. Good customers, though. That is different. I might have one or two special items for you. If oh you my god, how are you still Sticking talking? The Shut family, the though, fuck up, understand. please, for Christ's oh, sake. Your cast here is impeccable. You have Zumo writing trademark, got the hairstyle and everything. Constantly annoyed Sundari Mecha girlfriend that keeps telling you how unimportant you are. Yet every time you pee your pants, you better believe she'll summon you in a strategium to discuss just how poorly you pissed your pants. I know your type, Hadron, don't try and hide it. There's also Mrs. Tryhard, Barton, which is like the only guy I can listen to without vomiting. This chick, who is actually fine, but written very poorly. I mean, I, I think she has like 10 lines of dialogue in total or something. That might not be true, but it feels like it. And of course, last but not least, Zork from Fifth Element. The reason why I hate this character so much is because they feel extremely Forced. In Vermintide 2, every single banter had a purpose or some meaning behind it. It might be a silly joke, a hidden lore dump, or character development. In this game, they are literally talking AI generated lines! Hey, insert character name here. How, how is that one thing going? Uh, it's none of your business. I am Mrs. Tryhard. That's it! That's that. That's the whole interaction. Why did you have to die on me? Why? I, I never appreciated you enough. Please come back. Oh, get a load of this, Sergeant Major. And Moro is like laughing on the comms, like with the guys, like cheering them on. Like we need, we really need something like this, so we can actually start to feel like these characters are characters, as opposed to just like ambient voice lines that happen sometimes. And you know, it's really funny to me that all the characters are voiced 
terribly. But the enemies genuinely have some of the best voice acting in the business, especially the Bomba and the Toxflamer. Doesn't humanity have enough to worry about without the fighting itself? Now let's discuss the hub world. It's very not good. For reasons unbeknownst to mankind, Fetchard decided to make you see other players in the said hub, which honestly serves no purpose outside of increasing the loading time of the said hub. I mean, you can emote or talk in chat, but barely anyone responds to you, probably because they're AFK and waiting for a new mission on the terminal to appear. And this is where one of, if not the worst aspect of Dark Tide lies. The missions. Fetchuck nabbed the concept of mission terminal from Deep Rock Galactic without understanding why it worked there in the first place. My fellows, missions in DRG are procedurally generated. Yours are not. It does it does not work like that. If you really want to play the game and not the extended tutorial, you're gonna be playing Auric Maelstrom. And as of right now, you cannot make private games, you cannot select missions nor modifiers that you want. And it also does not help that there are like only two Auric modifiers that do anything remotely cool. You know, in short, missions when they disappear off the mission board, they're still alive. You can still play them for 24 hours. If you have the mission uh, identification, which you can get off of my website, maelstrom.net, that Grimalax made, and I'm hosting in my kitchen right now on a shitty laptop. And if you have a mod, you can replay those missions indefinitely for up to 24 hours. So the setup that we have to do to even approximate a choice of missions is basically we get 24 rolls of the dice every day on a Maelstrom mission. We have to hope that it's the correct modifier on the map that we want, and then we need to use a website that lets us look at the currently active missions that I have to host myself, and then I have to use a mod that someone else made so I can get them to, to get, so I can play them. Jesus. I don't understand how over a year on we still don't have like make your own mission, at least for private games. It's ridiculous. But the ability to just have no control over what I play, both in terms of, of difficulty, like there's no modded difficulty, right? And the game currently isn't hard enough. There isn't something like unless you're doing true solo, and even then it's like, yeah, okay, you're just speedrunning the game to 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 cheese shit. Like if you're doing challenge runs with where you self-impose, we're at a point where the game isn't really challenging even when you do that anymore. And we have no way to control that. It used to be that for the whole week, for five days, we would have like ventilation purge. You can check my old VODs back when the old system was in place. Uh, Pre-Maelstrom, the mission board was even worse than it is. It was actually horrible. You just don't have any control over your play experience. Like you can't even pick your fucking map, dude. Like, the, come on. <laughs> and I think it's finally time to address the elephant in the room, or rather the mecha mummy in the side room. I ain't saying she a gold digger. The crafting. But she ain't messing with no bro. Violets. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that earlier games had good crafting, it was always not great. I just played Vermintide recently and I could not, for the love of me, roll proper breakpoints on my Necro Staff. But this game takes the cake. This is peak dog shit. Here's how it works. Let's say you want an auto gun. Well, which one? There are like nine of these. Well, I don't fucking know, you might say. Well, here are your options. You can either Google which one is best, or you can buy every single one. Go here. Wait for it to load, uh, it takes a while, hold on. Okay, now you can test it and even see the breakpoints yourself. Well, no, what, what, are you fucking stupid? You have to individually upgrade each and every gun to its gold status, because the upgrade increases the overall power of the weapon. So, the breakpoints change. Okay, you quit the mean grinder, wait for it to load, upgrade things, wait for it to load again, and then you test things again. Now you can clearly see the breakpoints, right? No, you cannot! What, what are you, stupid? Did you check the stats of the grey weapons that you bought? Every time you want to try and buy a weapon, you have to buy tens of it to get the one that has somewhat of a good stats. It can take a couple of seconds or a couple of days, depending on your luck and the weapon. And it is important because stats matter a lot and can be the decisive factor of your enjoyment from the weapon. When I just started playing, I thought the chain next was hot garbage, and that is only because I rolled a bad one. The second I rolled a good one, it became one of my favorite weapons of all time. Okay, let's say you get a good roll, look at that. Perfect. Now I have to upgrade it a bit, and it's a brick, ladies and gentlemen. Confused? Don't worry, I will explain. Your weapons have four stats on top of the ones that you roll from this guy. Two of them are perks, and two of them are blessings, so four in total. This game only allows you to edit two 
of these. And if you do, it locks the other ones out. So, if you have three bad rolls on your weapon, it is unusable, as you cannot edit three of them. So even if you spend all your money and get a literal god roll, this bitch can still break it for you. But wait. It gets better. Let's say you're fucking stupid and you want to use the power sword, just like me. Well, in order for this weapon to not cause you aneurysm, you have to get this blessing. How do you get it? Well, you have three options. First, you have to pray that Baladin sells it. Second, you have to pray that after you complete the mission, you get an Emperor's Gift with it inside. The chances of which, according to my very rough calculations, are 8.16%. That's not a lot. Or, and that is what you'll most likely do, you buy a sword and upgrade it and pray that you not only get the perk you want, but that it would also be tier 4. Because the difference between a tier 4 perk and tier 3 perk is massive. So, in other words, welcome to the casino, the bats are in, let's throw the wheel and you just lost your house. But guys, it's not all that bad. Because it used to be even worse! The improvements haven't made it even close to something that I'd consider like acceptable for any standard, but it did, in fact, used to be worse. Uh, it used to not be in the game. When the game launched, like the crafting station at Hadron literally said, like, crafting coming soon. I'm not joking. You couldn't wow. re-roll anything. It, it used to be that you could only uh, re-roll one perk and one blessing. Like, you couldn't re-roll both blessings. And so it was even more stringent on what you could do with it. And, yeah. It's it's crazy to think that it was, it was even worse. If you play the game with someone who's not teleports, you will see that the majority of people will use the same loadouts. The reason for it is not because the people are meta slaves, it's because they literally have no choice. People don't want to experiment or try things out because it is literally impossible to do so unless you have these mods. It is impossible to test a weapon without fully committing to it, and that is extremely stupid and kills one of the most important components in a game like this variety. And in case you are wondering why are all weapons just a jumble of random letters and numbers, that's because originally there was a whole crafting system implemented in this game. It's still there, but you just cannot access it. And that is where I had a Yakuza revelation hitting me like that tiger drop. Day 3 and Dark Tide have the exact same developers. You don't believe me? Check this out. Removing quality of life features that were in the previous game for no apparent reason. Check. Having obvious improvements to the game hidden in the game files. Check. Making characters completely unlikable and lacking any personality whatsoever. Check. Broken at launch. Check. Although it seems like an obligation at this point. Huge technical issues that cannot be overlooked. Check. Developers going on vacation the second the game drops, thus failing to do any damage control whatsoever. Check. A perk that rewards you for standing still. Check. Use a smoke grenades. Check. Cannot browse servers. Check. Feminism. Triple check. Strike team. Check. Perhaps the only difference between these games is that in Dark Tide you actually have some numbers and sliding actually does something and not just there to say, look, we have a cool movement system in our game. But then again, Dark Tide does not have an edging mechanic, so it's a fair fight really. So you just watched me grill this game relentlessly for I am afraid to even look how long. But unlike so many other games, where the very fundamentals of the game offer absolutely nothing, this game does have a video game inside of it. I hate to sound like a guy who shits on the game for 3 hours and then still gives it a 7 so people will not be upset, but this is 100% truth. When the game works, and keep in mind it rarely does, but still, it is extremely fun. And I think it is time we appreciate the good things this game has to offer. You only complain this much about something if it's almost entirely very, very good. If, if the game was almost entirely shit and it had one good thing, people would stop. Um, the reason he's 2,000 hours in and complaining is because there's so many good things that are... 2,500. Like, 2,500. 20, I, there, I piled on 500 more, but less time. There are very, very few games that manage to get it right in the way that this does. And, and this extends to things like how you know, individual attacks feel and the sound effects and the music. Those things which can often go unremarked. It's just, this is an incredibly well-executed first-person shooter, and moreover, it's a very well-executed 40k game. I want to say Fat Shark has an incredible knack for getting the extremely difficult stuff right. Their movement system that's been transferred with Dark Tide, that enters with Vermintide, is completely unique and new for this almost a new genre of game that they created. If you look at the rest of like the first-person melee stuff, it's so different from what Vermintide did. They will nail the feeling 
and the feedback of hitting something with a sword in, in the year 40,000, but they can't get a map selection to yes. work. This is the best representation of the universe that we have ever seen. And that includes any form of media ever. Like the way they have made 40K come to life is absolutely fantastic. The sound design is spectacular. The voice acting for the enemies is spectacular. The way they look is fantastic. The music is exceptional. It understands what Warhammer 40,000 is and it, it executes it perfectly. It's very difficult to explain to people what the game gets right, because if you look at it and you're not aware of what it's doing, you say, oh, well, you know, it's first person melee, right? Is that that different to, I don't know, Skyrim? You swing the sword, there's power attacks and stuff. And you see, here's what someone should do if they think that. They should play Skyrim and then they should play like another game that has first person melee. Like even something like uh, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, good first person melee, play that and then play Dark Tide. And suddenly they'll see just how big the gap is. It's unfortunate because it did release. And it did release in not early access, and it did leave a horrible first impression. I, I think if you want to look at the future of Dark Tide, you can't look at it as if it had come out over a year ago. You kind of have to look at it from the perspective of we are playing an alpha, and maybe when they fix the crafting, I can be like, hey guys, they finished the game. Okay, so as if right now, if I asked you, should I buy Dark Tide? Is the answer yes or no? It's, you can't say yes or no, it really depends. If you are a baby casual and you'll play it for 10 hours and look at the pretty pictures, doubly so, yes, buy it. It is the best, aesthetically just fantastic representation of 40k, whatever, everything we've said before. And if you're the metal gamer, just like Vermintide 2, no, don't buy it. It doesn't respect your time. You're not going to get to enjoy it because of the crafting system. It's just going to, the juice isn't worth the squeeze, as they say. <laughs> and if you are actually an extremely hardcore player and you do plan on playing it for thousands of hours, well, I think unlike Vermintide, my answer would be no. Challenge content is inaccessible. Like, literally, you don't get to choose when you want to play it. The challenge content is even particularly well-tuned. The crafting system, even after 2,000 hours, is going to be a problem. Not right now, is what I would say. And yep, yeah, this is Dark Tide. Extremely inconsistent, barely functional, unbalanced mess with tons and tons of potential. Just like in my Vermintide 2 video, I have faith in Fat Chuck. It's not much to be honest, but it's still there. Please do not kill what's left. And I know a lot of people who are very upset about the game, and they have every right to be like this. For all they know, all they got in one year of this game existing is a class rework, which is pretty good, and one boss event, which is like 15 minutes worth of content. Outside of that, it has been a state of radio silence from the devs, and some people did believe that the game was dead, but it's not, especially considering the latest announcements. So the only thing I ask is please, polish your creation, it has so much potential, and listen to your testing crew, and on the contrary, never listen to Reddit, as some of their takes include, but not limited to, Bolter is an underpowered weapon. <laughs> And Smite, just, just so we are on the same page, uh, this is Smite, is a must-have pick for Auric Maelstrom. Thank you so much to Crab and Teleports for helping me out with this project. The link to all of their thingies will be in the description below. I might even appear in some of the videos and streams this guy made. And I genuinely hope the next time I am talking about this game, I will be only singing praises.